All right, hopefully that last video was really helpful. We're gonna get into the second part of this video, which is I'm trying to make the videos relatively small because we like little bites. So in the previous video, we left off where we had the charge controller and the Orion DC to DC charger that would charge the batteries, right? And then in the next video here, we're talking about the next phases. So we have everything coming off this link system, right? Which is a giant bus bar system, as you can see here. So where does this other wire go right here? So this is the wire for the DC that works off of the ambulance. So if this was an application for maybe a smaller vehicle, they would have like a DC fused um, circuit breaker box or fuse box. And I will show you my big one that's on the inside um, shortly. But so this DC wire here is sized the same as what was inside the ambulance. So if you follow this wire around, you'll follow it around here and you'll follow it here. And then this goes to a DC 60 amp disconnect. Okay, so this is a circuit breaker. So you can press this button and you could turn it off or turn it on. So again, same thing here where we, we did um, heat shrink and we did compression fittings. And these compression fittings are gonna be different than these compression fittings. And again, we're gonna go over that. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So just hang in there. So in the last piece of the DC to DC uh, link system is the is the, the battery cable. Now this guy comes down. Let me follow my finger with the camera, Keith. And then it comes around, and where does it go? It comes up into the DC to DC part of the inverter, right? So we have positive here and we have negative here. And again, I used 4 rock cable, and we're going to talk about that when we get to the computer. So that's your essentially your DC side of the system, okay? That's what's going to operate all the DC stuff. And again, the equipment's amazing. Um, they have two options here with the 3,000-watt uh, inverter. I can get to all the accolades of Victron, but they really make good stuff and they make really good stuff for the marine environment. And then on the AC side, like what's the AC out? So on the Victron, you notice here we have two cables, right? I have uh, one cable here, which is going to this guy, the AC breaker box. And again, I use square D for this. And the other cable is going to where? It's going through the wall. It's going to the shore power. So again, I could plug this into a house, I could plug it into a boat harbor. I could plug it into a generator. You can plug it into a campsite. There's lots of options with this guy. All right. Having said that, again, you'll notice here, um, all these are crimped, okay? And you notice you can see a little bit of shiny piece right there. This is what, this is a square crimp and we're gonna go over that. So just be patient with that. So again, that's the high level view of the inverter. That's high level view of the, the Victron system, uh, the link system. And again, we're gonna talk now a little bit about the shunt and what a shunt does. So a shunt is always taking the power in and out of the negative, and that's where it's measuring on the app, and it's also measuring on the, the meter inside. You've probably seen that cylindrical meter that I have. But that's what happens with the shunt. The shunt is basically measuring power flowing through, and you can't see it here, but flowing through this little black thing, and there's a little circuit board in there. That's a whole other long discussion, and I think the manufacturer does a much better job than I do of explaining it but it's essentially measuring current going through the negative to come up with watts, volts, amps, and amp hours. Again, not to uh, dismiss the top thing, which is a DC circuit break, a DC switch. Now this is again, what's running the bus, right? Over here and also going down, and it's gonna go down, 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 all the way to the fuse here. Now the fuse here is a little bit different than the fuses up top, but I just wanted to show this a reference. And again, I always keep this covered here. Everything is covered and I use um, uh, Velcro to keep that on. I mean, they don't, they didn't have Velcro with it, but I just used that. And again, you also notice throughout here, I've used some of the insulation for the, um, to protect this from moving from chafing. And I use lots of tie wraps. I, I'm always very liberal with the tie wraps because we want to make sure that it has flexibility, right? It can move like with vibrations on the road. And also we have some support here and there. I don't want too much support, but I also want to make sure that you get these connectors that have a kind of a grommet built in so that it's always protected from, from vibration. And now again, as we go down here, you'll probably notice, you've probably heard me say a few times in a few videos that I have right now, I have two batteries, two lithium ion batteries, and you can barely see the connections in there because of the way my tripod is pivoting. Give me one second, let me move this a little bit. Better view. There we go. So you can see in there, I have them strapped and they're mounted to the wall. 
uh, with a ratchet strap so they won't come off. And then it has some foam up in there so that if there's any vibration of bouncing, it'll be protected. And you also notice if you see me zoom in here, I also have the wires protected um, from chafing. So I put a tie wrap on the wires so there's really no chance of anything bad happening in there unless, you know, there's a, a collision and that's something that's out of my control. So again, those are four cables and those are wired and um, they're wired for 12 volts. So each battery again is, it's 12 volts at 206 amp hours. So let's just call that for the sake of the discussion, about 2,500 watts per battery. And again, with the opportunity to add two more future batteries like right here. So with that said, that concludes the DC part. And again, we'll go inside, we'll walk through that. But before we go, let's look at the AC part, because I think that's also equally as important. Again, for a lot of off-grid settings, this would apply for a lot of folks that are doing van life. A lot of times people will just have DC loads, but because it's an ambulance, I really want to do something a little more robust. Sometimes people put even a smaller inverter in, they won't use a, a Victron, they use something smaller, though Victron makes smaller inverters. And again, they're a little more pricey than everything else, but I was more than willing to uh, pay for the durability and then the reputation of the brand. So let's go through this. What do we have here? So in the, again, control panel, in the, in the circuit breaker box here, you notice too, I have crimped all these terminals, right? And so everything is crimped. So essentially, as we, if we, we rewind a little bit, we have um, a cable that comes out of here, right? And it comes around and goes in through here. Let me show you where it's coming. And again, this feeds a breaker, a 50 amp rated breaker here. So it comes in, feeds here, and then we have a neutral there. And all the grounds get tied to the frame, right? We want to make sure that this is grounded. And then over here, what I did is I used a bushing that, that basically prevents chafing inside this fiberglass box here. So I want to prevent any way for chafing. So we have multiple layers of protection for wires when it goes through the ambulance. We have the SJO labeled, um, uh, SJO rated uh, outside of the case. And again, all these wires that go through here, you'll see they're, um, these are 12, three SJO cables. So they're designed for, you know, it's like a welding cable, like the same kind of cable that you see here for, for um, the cabling for the DC. It's, it's a similar insulation rating, which is really important. And again, all I have in the ambits, I have three circuits. I have one that I actually cut in right here, which you can see. Let me move this over a little bit. So I put in a dedicated circuit here. And I have another dedicated circuit um, right here. This is for the cooktop. And I have um, another general circuit for the other atlas that are already in here. So some of, that, some of that stuff I was able to intercept that was existing in the ambulance. But again, in your application, if you're running wiring, I highly recommend uh, to running like an SJO rated cable. I don't really recommend running like a Romex, which is something you would see in a house because the Romex cable is really rated and designed to operate in a stationary application and the wire is usually solid, it's not stranded, where you can actually look and you can zoom in here, you can see this is stranded cable. So again, the SJO cable and even like battery cables, you, when you have more strands, you have more ability for electricity to flow. So that's why you would wanna use a, a flexible uh, cable. Um, and I highly recommend that. So even if you're running cable inside the ambulance, which you'll see, in the control box, some of that was what they call THHN, and I don't remember all those things from the code, but uh, it's a stranded uh, cable. There's no like solid cables in there. So anyway, that's that, and I will, you know, we're going to cut over to the uh, electrical part, or maybe I'll make a special, a separate video, I haven't really decided yet, to understand and walk you through all these things so you can actually understand the reason why we chose the four out cable versus a number six versus a number two. And I'm a big fan of expansion. So if there's a build, if I have a, a thought that I'm going to expand, it's just easier to run the wire. And again, it's not like you're running lots and lots of wire, right? The, the, the distance are relatively short, although the wire is very expensive. But to me, um, having a little bit of a background on this, to me, it made the most sense to, you know, spend a little extra money and have something that had a little, little bit of longevity and long-term uh, flexibility. So anyway, I hope this video was informative and let's go to the video that talk, talks about how to actually size these things.